Hey guys, and welcome to our channel. I'm Kaylin. I'm Robert. We're going to discuss, kind of bring you guys up to date on our thought process. Um, we were just thinking, you know, we, we went through the third IUI and it failed and we just kind of skimmed over it and we really didn't talk about it. Um, we just started talking about other plants. Okay, we're just gonna move on and do this. But I think we wanna talk about how the third IUI, how the failed third IUI has really changed the game plan for us. Just how she feels since the third IUI fell. It's really difficult because you feel like you try everything that you can to try to make it work. You do all the little tricks and everything and nothing works. And so you just feel like you're missing something. Like, what am I missing that's, that's going to make it work? Yeah. What's that one thing that I'm not doing? Um, every spring I start running again. So I've started running and I'm eating a lot better um, and juicing as well every day. So just trying to make everything, doing the best I can to get my body prepared, hopefully get my eggs um, in better shape. Yeah. And I feel like with a third failed IUI, um, I feel like we've been going 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 and my body was ready for a break the stress of it and the nerves it really tears up your nerves to go on this emotional roller coaster where it's like okay you're down here with a little gleam of hope and you know you're going up the two week wait and you're like oh this is going to be it this is going to be it this is going to be it and then something in that two week wait period hits home with you to make you think, oh, maybe it's not it. Maybe it's not it. And then you start plummeting down and you like, you get to the point to where you're trying to pick yourself back up. Like, no, this is going to be it. This is going to be it. And you get to the day that you actually test and it's not it and it failed. And that's just, that's a terrible feeling, honestly. And to have that three times in a row, mm -hmm. three months in a row, it's just too much. We wanted to talk to you about um, the thought process we're having now because we're taking the time off um, and because we've had the third IUI that failed. Um, obviously the next thing to do would be either to try another IUI or to do IVF and we've talked about IVF and we just we just can't really come to afford IVF right and even I mean we even talked about doing like fundraising and stuff like that but you know that's I don't know I just feel like if we can't do it ourselves, then I don't want to depend on other people to give us money because what if it's someone else's money and it fails? Mm -hmm. You know, that's... That would be my fear is to spend all that money and it still fail. Yeah. Because there are plenty of people that do IVF and it fails. And it's just really, it's really frustrating that insurance does not help us out. The insurance doesn't look at this as something that needs to be, they they don't think of it as like a, it has to happen. Like going to the doctors, you have to go to the doctors because you're sick. They don't think of this as like a necessity. Yeah. Which is so frustrating because there are so many other things that insurance covers that it's just ridiculous. It is. That it would not cover 
fertility. Mm -hmm. It's so frustrating. It just it really makes me angry. So we've been thinking about what is our purpose with all of this? Like, what is our ultimate goal with the IUIs and trying to have a baby? Like, is the purpose of all of this to be a parent? Or is the purpose to get Kaylin pregnant and let her experience pregnancy? Um, what is the purpose? And we've talked about that. And I think for the both of us, the purpose is to have a baby and to, to be a parent. That's the goal, is to be a parent. Not necessarily to give birth. Yeah. Not necessarily to give birth, which of course that would be great for Caitlin. She would love that. But that's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to be good parents. And so we've been looking into other options. And so one of those options have been to foster to adopt. And we've been seriously looking into that. And I want Kaylin to tell you a little bit about what she knows about it. So, um, from my understanding, with foster to adopt, if you tell the agency um, that you're going through that that is your ultimate goal is to, is foster to adopt, that um, there are children in the foster care system that are um, able to be adopted. So you could always get one, choose one of those, um, or even kids that are newly born. Like they could say. Um, you know, there's a good chance that this child might be um, available for adoption later on. So, I don't know. It's going to be difficult. But, like I was telling Robert, like, if you ask anybody who knows me, like any of my family, any of my really good friends, they know that I want to have, like, I want to have lots of kids. Like, the more the merrier i just want lots of kids the duggars i want to beat them i want to have more than 20 kids but just because i love i love kids yeah. and i want to but it's like i feel like foster care i never thought about it like that but that is what what it would be like you know i might not be their forever parent but i have i would have the opportunity to parent lots of children and to invest my um my time and my heart into them yeah and i was thinking about it and it kind of hit home for me the other night we were in target and we saw someone who when I was in high school, they invested a lot of time into me. Um, it was an old teacher of mine. And she, I mean, she would always follow up with me and check in with me, make sure I was doing my homework for every single class, not just hers. But, you know, and she really went to bat for me with some teachers. There were some teachers in classes that I just, I was not doing well in school. And she went to bat for me. And she really invested in me. And I was thinking about that. I was like, you know, my goal, obviously, you know, the point of being a parent for me is not for the experience of, you know, Kaylin giving birth. I mean, that would be great, but my ultimate goal is to be a good dad. And so who says it has to be a biological child you know there's so many kids out there that you know you can invest in and that you can you know take under your wing but there's a lot of questions to ask in that too because like the reason i would be doing this is to grow our family like that's why like when i bring a kid in i want to keep that kid you know but we also know that you're not gonna be able to keep everyone so it's gonna be it's difficult to wrap your mind around that that the kids can be taken away um but 
of course, you know, we'll get a kid that is ours that stays with us. You know, but it eventually. might not be eventually. Yeah, it might not be the first one. It might not be the second one. Um, so, am I okay with that? Am I okay with the thought that this kid might be taken away? So, there's just a lot that goes into it. It's a lot to think about. Um, but I think we are leaning more toward that option. There's a class um, that meets, and it's kind of like a um, kind of like a support group that meets on Wednesday nights. I think we should go to that and see if we can get some more questions answered. Yeah, if they're having it. If I've they're... emailed, I've been in contact with a local um, agency here. It's called A Home For Me, and it actually started at the church that I work at. Mm. I think it's a good option. I think it's something we definitely want to look into more. Um, I think it's something that we're not opposed to. Um, you know, if the only way that we have a kid is through fostering to adopt and the kid ends up being ours, um, we get to keep them and we don't have a biological child, I think that's okay with me. Mm -hmm. Is that okay with you? If you or anyone you know has any experience with fostering or fostering to adopt, let us know because we really don't know anybody. Like, I know somebody from when I was younger. My mom's really good friend did it, but that was forever ago. That was in Florida, but that wasn't even in South Carolina. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we're really, really new to this. I mean, really to the point to where we haven't even gotten all our questions answered yet. We hadn't even started getting our questions answered yet. Our one question, I've been like dying to have her email me back and she hasn't, I keep checking my email. Dogs. Yeah. Are there any restrictions on dogs? Yeah. Because because if there are, I'm not getting rid of my dog. We're I'm not sorry. getting rid of our dogs. I can't get rid of. I can't get rid of my dog just to get a kid. It's just. But if you guys know about any of that, if you know if there are any dog restrictions for fostering, um, let us know. If you if you have any experience with this at all, um, definitely leave it in the comments below because, like I said, we are so new to even the idea of fostering that we could use all the help possible. Um, the only thing that we've gotten figured out is that we want a child because we want to be parents. And however we get that child to be parents is okay by us. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you guys know anyone who has fostered or fostered to adopt or adopted <laughs> um, please let us know if you have or if you know anybody who has um, let us know what you know because we don't know anything we're brand new to this so um, yeah help us out um, again thank you so much for watching and if you like the video give it a thumbs up comment below hit that subscribe button Yep, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, we post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Um, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Adios.